This video is part of a series called Is It Worth It? where I test some of the more expensive and niche cycling products so you don't have to. Previously, I've done two videos on one on oversized pulley wheels and I've done another one on one piece rear derailleur hangers. So I'll link them in the description if you wanna go check them out. But this one is of course on ceramic bearings. Are ceramic bearings worth the money? Well, for this past year, I've been testing them on both my road bike and on my time trial bike. I've upgraded the bottom brackets and I've upgraded the wheels to ceramic bearings and I've actually, funny enough, got oversized pulley wheels on both of them as well. Ceramic bearings are starting to become, well, very common. They're starting to be stocked stock with uh, the Chinese wheel sets and a lot of Western wheel sets are coming with them now as well. So let's find out, are they worth it? And I'm gonna share my experiences with you. Before we get into ceramic bearings, I want to talk to you about what actually makes a bearing faster. So first of all, there is the type of grease that you have in there. If you have like a thinner grease or more of an oil, that bearing is gonna spin faster. If you have a thicker, more winter grease, it's obviously gonna spin a bit slower. Then there's the grease fill rate. If you fill it with more grease, it's gonna be harder for those bearings to push through the grease. And if you have less, it's gonna make it spin a little bit faster again. Next up are the seals on the bearings, so the parts that cover the outsides. If they are non-contact seals, so the, the actual balls and the race isn't touching them, the bearing is going to be an even faster bearing. So race bearings tend to be non-contact seal bearings. Then probably the most important thing is the actual quality of the balls and the races inside the bearing. So the more round the ball and the smoother the race, the less wear that there's going to be in the bearing and less resistance. Tolerance is also important. When you put the bearing into its press fit, if you have like an egg-shaped fit or it doesn't fit perfectly in there or it's too tight then you're going to wear through that bearing quicker as well and increase the resistance finally there's actually the hardness of the bearings itself so the actual balls and this is where ceramic bearings come in so with a ceramic bearing the actual ball itself in the bearing that's what's hard the reason why the harder materials are faster inside bearings and things that roll it's just because they deform less if you think like a train is actually very efficient because you've got a steel wheel hub on top of a steel rail so there's very little resistance as it runs over it but in ceramic the ceramic balls are harder than steel generally only the balls are ceramic and the races still remain as steel and they use a polyamide cage to keep the balls perfectly separated between each other now, I must say, the numbers we are talking about here are very, very small. When you're looking at per bearing, the resistance might be like 0.2 of a watt. And when you have a ceramic bearing, that might go down to like 0.18 or 0.15. It's a very, very tiny upgrade. I actually wanted to demonstrate some of these effects to you. So I've pulled apart my rear derailleur jockey pulley wheels and I want to show you what they're like. So here they are with the original grease. You can see that they hardly spin at all. Next up, when you take the seals out and you take the grease out, you can see just how freely they spin. And then I put in some race grease into them. And finally, you can see the spin rate with the race grease. It's a little bit better than having the old normal grease in there, but definitely not as good as having the no seals without any grease in there. Okay, the infamous spin tests. I have done spin tests for both the bottom brackets on here and the wheels individually. And I'm just gonna give you the numbers, but please remember this thing. Doing a weightless spin test on the bearings doesn't represent the resistance. Doesn't mean the ceramic bearings are faster. Realistically, I don't have the means to test the exact resistance of the bearings themselves here at home. So when I replace the bearings on the wheels for my time trial bike, the original steel bearings after three runs averaged two minutes and 58 seconds. With the ceramic bearings, they averaged three minutes and 30 seconds. So a little bit longer of a spin, but not that much. Although they are on my time trial bike, which doesn't get the mileage like this thing does. So the bearings are a lot less worn. The bigger numbers came from this guy. Well, I'd run about 15,000 kilometers in the old steel bearings, which is a little bit too long. From the average of three different spin tests, the old bearings went from a minute 43 to the new bearings to five minutes and 32 seconds. So 
really big changes. But like I said, that's a ceramic bearing compared to an old set of bearings that did need replacing. Then finally, the bottom brackets, I'm just gonna do a quick visual test. You'll just see a, the ceramic bottom bracket that I've got here on this bike compared to a normal bottom bracket. And you can just see the differences as to how they spin there. All right, here's the important question. You've bought your ceramic bearings. Did they feel faster? The answer is very obviously no. <laughs> they did not feel faster at all. One thing I will say, I think this is probably placebo effect, but for this bike here, like I said, I replaced the bottom bracket and the wheels and it did feel smoother, but those bearings were in desperate need of changing. So I felt smoother on this bike. For my time trial bike, however, I can't say that I felt the difference at all. This is just my opinion, but realistically, anything less than 10 watts, the body's probably not going to be able to feel it, especially when you've got other things like road vibrations and wind noise and stuff going on. It's just such a small number that you can't feel it. And well, upgrading the ceramic bearings is even less than 10 watts, a lot less than 10 watts. So yeah, you can't feel it at all. There is one place, however, where ceramic bearings seem to get their money worth, and that is the longevity or the lifespan of the bearing itself. Apparently, some of them can last up to about four times longer than a normal steel bearing. And this is particularly true when you're riding your bike through winter as well. Me personally, I've done 10,000 kilometers on my road bike, and well, only 1,000 kilometers on this. It's a time trial bike, only used for racing. And like, you open the bottom bracket up, you look at the bearings, you feel how smooth they are, and they feel fantastic so far, even after 10,000 K on the road bike. So for me, so far, they seem like they last longer. I'll probably have to do another year or so to really test them to the max. But anecdotally from some other friends who are some much more hardcore and ride through a lot more wet weather than I do in winter, apparently for them, they've also used ceramic bearings and they do seem to last a lot longer for them, almost twice the length as a normal bearing. That's just anecdotal evidence though, take it for what it is. Okay, let's talk about the prices. And realistically, just to replace the wheel bearings, you're looking at about 200 British pounds for most brands. When you go to ceramic speed, that goes up to like 411 pounds. It's double the price, which is insane. When you consider that like a race, a steel race bearing with contactless seals is probably going to be in the range of 15 to 20 pounds. And just your regular bearing is going to be about five pound per bearing that's compared to roughly 50 pounds, 40 to 50 pounds per ceramic bearing that you buy. But if they really do last twice as long or four times longer, I guess it's less work and maintenance you have to do to your bike. So maybe it's not the end of the world? It's very likely that some of you will have seen a video by Hambini in the past, it must be like five or eight years ago now maybe, where he really doesn't like the ceramic bearings and justifies his reasons and suggests they don't last as long. Then that's been countered by Zero Friction Cycling, which I'm also gonna link down in the description below. If you wanna check this stuff out, it's like a 50 page read. I can't go over all the details here, but he counters that, suggests that actually his data isn't correct and stuff. It's a whole argument. They're probably still at ends with each other. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm just gonna link the stuff below if you wanna check out for ceramic bearings and against ceramic bearings. One thing I do have to say on that matter though is I do think if ceramic bearings didn't work or didn't last longer, we would probably know by now and the companies would have been called out. I could still be wrong in the future though. Okay, the question you've been waiting for, can I recommend them? For some reason, this is an upgrade that I really, really liked for my own bike, purely because I think I just went from some old bearings to some new bearings. So for the road bike, it felt like it made a difference. For the time trial bike, it didn't because they weren't old. So for me, placebo wise, it seems to feel a bit smoother, but I don't think that I can recommend them. Maybe if you do a bit more riding through winter or you want to take your bike into the shop less often to get the bearings changed, then 
I think there's a justification for them. But for actual speed gains, ah, whatever man, just buy some contactless race seals, put some race grease in there, and it's gonna be just as fast as, as a ceramic bearing, to be honest. There is one bearing on here that I would like to shout out though that I can recommend and that is the bottom bracket. I've bought this one from a company called Seabear. It cost me like £115, which is about €130 Euros, and honestly it's been fantastic for me. It's so when you consider the price of a good quality steel bottom bracket, anywhere from like £80 to £120, buying a ceramic bottom bracket for the same price which should last longer, this has been a nice upgrade, I think. So it looks like that's my answer, guys. It's an upgrade that I liked, but can't necessarily recommend it. Will I be buying ceramic bearings again for my own bike? The answer is no, especially not for the wheels. When it comes to the bottom bracket from Seabear, I probably will keep buying them though, because I've really enjoyed that one. Anyway, guys, have you had experiences with ceramic bottom brackets and bearings? Did you like them? Did they last longer? Did they not? And what are your thoughts? Um, if you have any further questions for me, you can find me in the comments below where I reply to most things, or you can message me privately on Instagram over here. I've been Jason, this has been Cycling Unboxed. I'll see you in another video.